Hey, everybody, and welcome to Grace to Gratitude. I have with me a very special guest today, Annie O'Mahony. Annie, hi. Hi. How are you? Just great. And so happy to have you here. So, all right, everybody. I know you remember the first story that I told that was actually the catalyst for me beginning this series. Um, grace to gratitude. It was a time where um, I had a very, um, how can I explain it, just cosmic type of experience. And um, I told you a little bit about it. But today, with this wrap up of grace to gratitude, I have the other co-storyteller with me today. And so I want to tell you the whole story and Annie's gonna give her part, but it was extraordinary and it continues to be extraordinary because of course, like every story, it just is never an end, is it? Mm -hmm. Every day is a new beginning. And so, let me tell you how this all started for me. So this was the last Sunday in October and I was feeling kind of lazy, didn't want to get out of bed. And I decided that I would bring my computer into bed with me and answer some emails and try to get ahead of myself a little bit for the coming week. And I opened my emails and I noticed um, as I was scrolling through an email from a fellow whose name is Jeff Pulver. <clears throat> now, Jeff, I really wasn't that acquainted with, um, but he had come into my um, sort of energy field through two friends of mine, Monty Farber and Amy Zerner. And um, they were, talking about starting a show called, <clears throat> excuse me, Meet the Oracles on one of Jeff Pulver's shows. In addition, Jeff was doing some really interesting things and I had tuned into his show on a couple of occasions and really enjoyed everything. But of course, as always, I had a couple of hundred emails to get through and I'm just scrolling through and deleting, deleting, deleting. But the subject line of Jeff's email really caught my attention. And it had something to do, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was like, singers and songwriters, thank you. I thought, hmm. And I opened up the email and Jeff was saying thank you to everyone who had helped him to launch his um, online platform for new up and coming singers and songwriters. And the name of it was Grafton Street TV. Now that didn't mean anything to me, but all of a sudden I get this image in my mind's eye of this beautiful young woman who I had known from my son Jacob's college days. Now, at the time um, I was, a little bit taken aback by seeing her face in front of me because the truth was that my son Jacob, who by the way is right behind us here today, um, was deceased and he had been gone for about nine years and I really hadn't been in touch with Annie. I know I had known her very briefly through uh, Jacob and his, his years at college, but um, her face was right there. There was no denying it. But all I could remember was that her name was Annie. I couldn't remember her last name. And I thought I remembered that she was um, a singer, but I didn't know if she was still doing it. And the last I think I had even seen of her that was maybe she was living in Nashville or somewhere. I had no idea how to contact her. But following through on my gut, as I say, I typed her name into my email thinking, well, maybe we've corresponded in some way in the past and her name will pop up. Didn't happen. 
So then I'm thinking, well, maybe on Facebook, we had corresponded after Jacob died. Put in Annie, a thousand people come up, right? And so I closed my eyes and I said, Jacob, if this is a message from you and I need to get this to Annie, I need to know her last name. Within seconds, I remembered her last name. It came to me in a flash. And frankly, I laughed out loud. And I said, okay, loud and clear. And so then I type her name into my Facebook search and she pops right up. And I'm gonna share with you, I heard this loud creak in the corner of my bedroom. I had never heard a creak in my bedroom before. All right. So now I knew that I was on a mission and the mission was not for me. It was for Jacob and for Annie, obviously. And so I'm thinking to myself, well, what are the chances that Annie's still on Facebook after all these years? But I just typed in a little, a little question, Annie, are you still here? 15 seconds later, I get a response. Annie? Take it from my side? Yeah. So um, I'm going to start at the beginning of my story. Um, this year has been quite a year for everybody. Um, I think everybody has their own little stories that have popped up, whether it be you know good or bad stories. So this year, um, I got some kind of life-changing news in the middle of the summer um, that kind of made my life go in a very different direction that I was anticipating. Um, I at the time was engaged and decided because of this news that I needed to call off the engagement. And I kind of started this new path of just trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with my life. Um, and the first person I would have called to ask what I should do with my life about 10 years ago would have been Jacob. So I kind of spent a lot of the, the last few months thinking about him. Um, not that I ever forgot about him, but it was just kind of, he was always in the back of my mind, always kind of, you know, there's little signs here and there that you pick up, but as life just kind of flashes forward and you kind of keep moving, you just kind of keep moving. So I've been thinking a lot about Jacob and um, in August, I had went out to have some drinks with some friends and I came back and all of a sudden I just got this kind of creative um, thing to, to write a song. And it was a song that ended up taking me about 10 minutes to write. And it was a song about Jacob, which again, it's not that I don't think about him or, or, um, or anything like that. It was just kind of like, I feel like I need to write something about him because I feel like he's kind of gotten lost in the busyness of life. And I need to just remember that his spirit is still with me and he's going to help me get through all these kind of weird and difficult, strange, complicated times. Um, so I wrote that song in August and his um, anniversary of when he passed away is in September. And I had thought a lot about reaching out to you, Marcy, to say, do you mind if I share this song and share our story of how we met and why I wrote this song? And I just never did. I think I was just a little nervous to put myself out there and put this song out there. I don't think I was quite ready. So thinking a lot about him, thinking about you. And then, um, yeah, in the last weekend in October, I was up in New Hampshire with friends. And I like to bring Jacob up when we're, you know, having a good time because I feel like his energy was still positive. And my, a couple of my friends were lucky enough to meet Jacob back in college when he, would, he visited me here in um, the Boston area. And um, so we were talking about him and I was saying, you know, I just, I miss him, but I feel like I need to keep talking about him and keep thinking about him. And for some reason, I felt very drawn to just this, you know, getting clo back, back closer to him as close as I could. Um, that I had been in the past. And so we were talking about him all night and I wake up to a message from Marcy. <laughs> Are you here? Are you still living in Massachusetts? And I thought that I was being spammed and I thought it was like the strangest thing. And even my friends were freaked out because they knew that I was going on and on about Jacob all night. They were like, what is that? wait a second, his mom just messaged you? I was like, yes, guys, his mom just reached out to me. They were like, uh, this is weird. So that's my side. So Annie, um, Annie had responded and mm -hmm. I, I really knew that I needed to get this information 
for, you know, to her. So I asked Annie for her email and I just happened to say, you know, Annie, I'd love to chat and get caught up. And she wrote back to me and told me that she was visiting friends in New Hampshire. And I said, okay, well, we'll make a time to chat. And all of a sudden I got this thought, wait a second, if she's in New Hampshire and she's driving back today, which is what she had told me, I wonder where she lives. So I asked Annie, where do you live? And I said, I live in South Weymouth. Where do you live? <laughs> and I said, I live in South Weymouth. I'm sure that you could have heard the squeals of laughter and like sheer delight when we both realized that we lived in the same town in Massachusetts. Yeah. Now the story gets better. So I said to her, well, where are you in South Weymouth? And Annie responded with where she was, but she said, Marcy, we're about one mile from each other. <laughs> now, I have to give a little bit of background here in that um, when I, before I moved to South Weymouth, um, I had been living in Australia. But before I went to Australia, I had checked out some places that um, were possibilities for me to move to when I came back, because I knew I wanted to be, um, you know, close to city access and et cetera. And no matter where I looked, it didn't matter how beautiful the place was, how perfect it was. I kept coming back to the very same development in South Weymouth and there was nothing available. And so while I was in Australia, I kept checking nothing available, nothing available, available, nothing available. So the time came when COVID hit and I knew I had a very small window because the United States was closing its doors, Australia was closing its doors. And so I came back to uh, Massachusetts and had no place to live and had no idea like where I was going to end up because everything had closed down. Well, a couple of months after that, and it was actually May, I, um, was starting to feel that the real estate market was opening a little bit. Some of the agents were showing places very carefully. And I said, okay, now's my chance. And so I just started to peruse the advertisements. And of course there was one apartment in the development that I wanted to be in. And to make a long story short, within 24 hours, I had moved into it. Now, that was in May. Annie, when did you move to South Weymouth? I've been in South Weymouth for about a year and a half. My sister, um, I live with my sister um, and she's been here for about eight years. So between, um, I was living in Nashville for a little while then I was living in DC, but um, I've been back here about, oh, it's almost two years now. Almost two years. Mm -hmm. So we end up one mile from each other. So of course this was too much for any of us to be able to hold in, right? And we made arrangements to meet that night for dinner. So Annie? So I'm sitting there, I, I think I still thought I was being spammed. Like I think that I <laughs> thought I was being catfished and that somebody's gonna walk through the door and like kidnap me because <laughs> the whole thing was just wild. And so, I'm sitting there at the restaurant waiting for you to walk through and I see you and I'm thinking, this is still just so wild. Given everything that has happened this year, all of the transition, all of the complicated stuff that's going on, I couldn't believe that I was given this gift of Jacob's mom, which is the best gift I could have given or could have gotten. Um, and we hugged for probably two minutes in there at the hostess stand. Yes. And I told you immediately, I said, Marcy, I was talking about Jacob last night. And you just kind of shook your head and was just like, I, I kind of figured. I kind of <laughs> <laughs> so we sit down and of course, 
hours go by and we are non-stop talking, talking, talking. I'm mm -hmm. talking about my life, Annie's talking about hers and all of these intersects, right? That keep happening, of course, all around Jacob. So then, um, First off, I have to say the staff was incredible. Yeah, they, they just kept, you know, giving us all the space that we needed. Um, they knew that this was a very, very special occasion, and fortunately, just kept both the water and the wine poured, and we just had the most wonderful time. Mm -hmm. So Annie proceeded to share with me what had been going on, and talked also about um, this wonderful um, song that she had written. But also, when we talked about the information that came through on Jeff Pulver's email about this place called Grafton Street, which I, of course, knew nothing about, Annie did. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Annie. Yeah, so Grafton Street is a super famous street in Dublin, Ireland, which my dad um, was from uh, right outside of Dublin in Kildare. And Grafton Street is known for all the musicians that will go out there. And I think it's called busking, uh, where basically you would go out there and you would sing and for, you know, for pennies or um, dollars or whatever. Uh, but this is, you know, this street that is kind of fun to walk down because there's a lot of talented people that just kind of you know, sit out there and play. There's been a ton of people who have been discovered on that street. But it was the connection there that was kind of kind of full circle where, you know, it, you know maybe it's just a name, maybe they, they created this TV or platform because of, you know, the, the famous, um, you know, the, the, the way that Grafton Street kind of brings these musicians up. But it was just kind of one of those full circle moments where like, of course it's, you know, of course it's Grafton Street, of course it's Ireland, of course it all kind of makes sense that this is something that needed to kind of get back to me and, um, you know, reconnected us and just crazy. And, and then there's more, of course. So Annie O'Mahony, right? Yep, O'Mahony is how Mahoney. you say it. I'm sorry. That's okay, O'Mahony. So Annie, where was your dad the day that you were born? He was in Ireland. <laughs> he was in Ireland. Um, he, his dad passed away the day that I was born. So he was um, in Ireland, putting his dad to rest with his family. And I was born, yeah, August 31st. So it was kind of a funny story when I was little, it was always, um, you know, your grandfather was going up to heaven while you were coming down. Um, and it's always something that I felt really connected to my grandfather, even though I never met him. Um, obviously I'd heard stories and stuff like that, but yeah, I mean, Ireland is a, you know, a huge part of my life. Um, and the music is a huge part of my life as well. So just, it's just so cool. Just and so cool. where does your grandmother still live? She's in Kildare. Yeah. She's still Living in Ireland. Right outside of Dublin, mm -hmm. right outside of Grafton Street. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. So and so we have all of this enormous circle of life that just keeps spiraling and spiraling and spiraling bringing us all together mm -hmm. and for you and I needless to say this has been really the beginning of something so so deep so fulfilling mm -hmm. so special so exciting mm -hmm. and I remember that night um, as we were finally saying goodbye and the sleepy-eyed staff <laughs> By the way, that was at Stockholders Restaurant. They were absolutely wonderful with us. Um, we parted that night and I remember, Annie, do you remember what you said to me? I don't. You said to me, you reached over and you said, Marcy, I need you. Yeah. And I said, Annie, I need you. And I don't think I slept a wink that night. I was so busy, first off, you know, thanking Jacob for this incredible phenomenon mm -hmm. and um, laughing with him and thinking, 
it just, it never ends, right? Mm -hmm. And thinking about how incredible it is that the universe is constantly at work, always in our favor. It may not feel like it or seem like it is at times where mm -hmm. we are maybe focused on loss rather than what is actually happening and ready to be gifted to us. Mm -hmm. And yet, here we are, nothing but evidence about how loved and cherished we are. Mm -hmm. And so that night also, when um, I got home, um, Annie so beautifully gifted me with the song of Jacob. Mm -hmm. And Annie, I'm wondering if you wouldn't bless us all sure. and really help me to wrap up this month um, where I'm sure people will understand like how it was so clear to me that grace had brought us to this place where our hearts were overflowing with such gratitude for this moment. And like I said, no ending here, mm. but the most incredible beginning. And so, Annie, sure. without further ado, Let me grab my guitar. would you bless us with the song for Jacob that you had yeah. written for him? Can you hear me okay? I took my headphones yes. off. Yeah, can hear you great. So like I said, I wrote this song in, I think it was August, um, but it just kind of came to me. And it's, it's just about, being okay with being sad, being okay with missing people, but also remembering the good times and remembering that even though you can't go back to those places that are full of great memories, you can still remember them and hold on to them and um, move on with them. So this is called Jacob's Song. That you're not around 
travel back in time when that ladder fell out of the cliff. All we ever wanted was to get high. All we ever wanted was the good life. You taught me to breathe and take it all in. That's Jacob's song. Oh my God, Annie. I have to look back on a second for you. <laughs> I love so that incredible. song. I love that song too. And my heart in this moment, it cannot be contained. I can feel it like just expanding beyond. Just so incredible. And how blessed I feel to have been brought together with you and to just know that, um, yeah, love never dies. Mm -mm. Love never dies. Mm -mm. In fact, neither do we as evidenced by, <laughs> by how much Jacob had to say about all this. Yeah, I know. And so I have to say, I'm so grateful to him. Um, and also just to all of the universal forces that have brought us together. And to all of our new beginnings right here and right now in this moment, how grace is carrying us forward 24 seven and giving us opportunity every nanosecond for that new beginning with so much love and so much light and to know that our lives are evidence of gratitude in motion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I, you can't make this stuff up, right? We keep talking about it. You can't make it up. You can't make it up. You can't make it up. There's so much more we could talk about when it comes to Jacob and, you know, just how I've, he's helped me get to this obviously this exact moment, but you know, that's, that's something that I, I feel like I'm going to get emotional. This year has been tough, but if you look around and you stop being so caught up in the chaos, you can look around and realize just how much you have to be grateful for. And, um, you know, that's something that I try to teach my family and my friends. It's like, we just have so much to be grateful for that. Stop harping on things we don't have. Think about everything that you've how, how hard you have worked to get to this very moment so that you can have a smile on your face and be able to tell people your story and be able to tell people how, how important it is just to be happy and, and, and have that, that gratefulness in your heart that, you know, that's, that's something that I feel like is contagious. And I just hope that people, as this year, crazy year kind of comes to an end and a new year begins that they can kind of take a look at this year and, and come out of it being more grateful than they ever have. Uh, from your mouth to God's ears. Mm -hmm. That's a wish that I have for everyone. Annie, how can people find you? I have an Instagram. It's Annie O underscore music. Um, and so I, I'm, I just started, it's kind of funny, you know, you kind of put put, you know, kicked me in the butt to start putting some stuff out there. So I have a couple videos out there now and I'm working with um, an incredible set of musicians in Quincy that have helped elevate my songs more than I could ever imagine. So I think there's some really good stuff to come and I'm, I'm excited. You know, I don't, I, I think there's a, there's a lot of my story that I'd like to tell via my songs and I hope that people will listen and, and like them and understand them and um, yeah. How fantastic. Yeah. I'm so thrilled to be a part of this and just to watch all of this unfold for you. Thank you. And um, uh, I think you and your band recently did record a demo, right? Or Yep, we have a couple of demos that are coming together. Um, they're not quite ready for public consumption, but they're getting there. Mm -hmm. And it's been so much fun. And um, that's a whole nother set of great, like, I'm just so grateful for them too, that they want to take my songs and like I said, elevate them. And it's been cool. It's just been so cool. And I'm so, <laughs> I'm so grateful. <laughs> I really am. 
Oh, well, I love you so much. And I'm so oh, yeah. happy that we've had this opportunity to um, share this with our audiences because this is real life. This is how it really happens. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, uh, of course, if anyone wants to reach me, you can do so at heartshiftcoach.com. And this has been 30 days of grace to gratitude that I am so grateful for. And quite frankly, I'm going to say this. I think my life will never be the same. Never. I have been so touched by what's happened with you and I and what has unfolded, the stories that people have shared here in this series. Um, yeah, there's no place but up. Yeah, so, so much love to you. you and too. thank you for sharing your song. It's thank so you beautiful. For on. Thank I'm you for so having love it. Yeah, blessing all of us. Have a wonderful day and Thanks. we'll hear from you, you again soon. Sounds good, Marcy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.